Hello, Fruitport High School AP Chemistry students. It's time for another lesson. This is your Friday or Monday lesson. Uh, and in today's lesson, I want to teach you some laboratory you know, techniques for solution preparation, okay? Now, you're all going to be given a slightly different uh, task depending on your gender and where your name is in the alphabet of what molarity and how many uh, milliliters of solution I want you to make. So everybody's math will be different. You'll get to practice mole and molar mass and molarity calculations, okay? But in this situation, I want to show you some of the tricks because that's going to be part of your assignment when you read it over, okay? So um, a lot of you are going to have to make like 250 milliliters of uh, crystals uh, into a, a solution, okay? And so uh, the first thing we should talk about is which piece of glass equipment would be the best for measuring uh, maybe, you know, 100 milliliters or whatever amount we have. So we have beakers, we have an Erlenmeyer flask, we have a uh, volumetric flask, and we have graduated cylinders. And if you want to pause it and rank them, which ones are the best for being accurate, uh, you can pause the video and try to rank them in order. Okay, I'll give you a second to do that. And when we take a look at this, I hope you put the beaker in last place. Remember, things that are wide are not accurate. Even though they have tick marks, these are not uh, precise. And chemistry is a precise science, okay? And this flask also is not precise. It's too wide. It's too wide. I'm going to guess a lot of you pick the graduated cylinder because it's got a lot of tick marks and it's pretty skinny. But actually, these fancy volumetric flasks are the most accurate at one precise uh, measurement. And you can, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but this is much skinnier than this. It's the skinnier, the better. And so we're going to use a volumetric flask. But now this one is only accurate to exactly 250 milliliters. We also have 500 and 1,000 and 150 milliliter volumetric flasks. But this one here um, is really exact. I don't know if you can see with the blue background, but right here there's a little line that was precisely drawn. Even though the glass is mass produced, the line is put in a very exact spot to know exactly where uh, they are. Here's another volumetric flask. And if in the blue background, oh, I'm trying to make it, you might be able to see the line is right here, which is higher than it is here. It's because, again, somehow in the mass produced machines, these lines do not always end up, uh, you know, 250 milliliters is not the same height than the skinny part. This one's down here. So you'll get one of these to use for your lab. Okay. So uh, a couple other techniques for mixing might seem a little bit different. So you're going to have a precise amount of grams. I'm going to use some nickel chloride here and, and uh, we'll put these on one of these weighing boats, one of these plastic uh, uh, cheap throwaway containers. And you'll have to actually get an exact amount of grams uh, based on your calculations. You'll use the tear button, all that stuff. So let's say I need to put this many grams to make 250 milliliter solution. You are not going to add 250 milliliters of water. You are going to add enough water so the mixture gets to 250 milliliters. That's the difference between molarity and molality. And uh, we could talk about that. So uh, watch this technique. These are these uh, these weighing boats can are flexible, so you can uh, you can easily aim and pour what you need into. But if you look carefully, little residue, little crystals, uh, kind of stick around in this. It might be too hard to see. So here's a technique that uh, that we use. We have a spray bottle with DI water. And since uh, the line will measure when we get to 250, we don't have to be careful how much we add. You can actually spray water into the weigh boat with the right uh, angle and the right, uh, you know, aim. And you can kind of rinse out and wash down all the crystal residue. Oh, I missed a little bit, so let me get a little bit more. So let me try to hold at this angle to see. If you kind of bend this, right, and you spray in there, the water will uh, pick up the crystals, and as gravity takes the water in, we have that. So now I don't see any crystal residue. This helps me transfer the exact amount of uh, water that we needed. Okay. 
Now, uh, I want to add some water to here, and I could go, uh, VI water is better than tap water, so I fill this spray bottle with water. And the best technique for this is to add water to a certain level, but stay away from this height here, just in case it takes a while for the crystals to dissolve and take up some extra space or something. But we'll snap on the cap, and what we'll do is we'll do this five, 15, 55, whatever you need to get all the crystals to dissolve. And then we will top off till we get to the line. Now, if you go over the line, you have screwed up and you need to start over. So I want to be a little bit careful. And when I get to the end, I want to use something a little bit more precise than just... Uh, let me get a little bit more water here. Uh, then just, uh, you know, hoping I don't over pour. And so here's a little technique I found. I don't know if you guys can see this here, but here's the level of the water. And here is the level of the line I'm aiming for. So I'll get a small little beaker container, pour some water in here, and I'll add the last little bit with the pipette. And I'll add it. I'll get nice and my eye level so I can clearly see the meniscus. I'm really close, but the meniscus is still below there. And I'll just kind of add a couple of drops to get there. And I sh I'm really close to the meniscus. I might do a couple more of these to mix the pre-mixed water with the other water that I just added to get this here. And I'll double check that the, oh, I've got some bubbles in there. That makes it hard to read the meniscus. I think I need a few more drops of water. So I'll add a few more drops, just a few, right? And I'll get that meniscus. Now, this is really skinny, and the meniscus is really easy to read. And uh, my theory is that most students always re misread the meniscus, but uh, this will be a good time to practice it. You can show me in class. So this would now be my solution that I could use and prep. We're going to test it using a spectrophotometer. I'll show you how to do that. So read over the assignment that I posted. Uh, what chemical are you making? What molarity do you have to make and how much? And you can do the mathematics. And I want you to write up some directions. Talk about which piece of glassware. Are you going to add water first? Are you going to add water second? Uh, the rinsing the water out of the weighing boat. Kind of like write up your techniques and your recipe how to make this. All right. We'll see you in class next time.